People have been using cork for thousands of years. The ancient Egyptians used cork stoppers for bath oils, spice tubes, liquor bottles, and test tubes. Cork is nearly impermeable and also stretches, so it makes a good stopper. In the Mediterranean Sea, people used it in their sandals to absorb the shock while walking. Ancient Romans used it in their fishing nets and in their boats. Cork comes from the outer bark of an evergreen oak tree, known by its Latin name, Corcus uber, which means cork oak. A tree can't be stripped of its bark until it's between 15 to 20 years old and approximately 2.3 feet in circumference. It can be harvested again every 8 to 10 years. Cork trees can live up to 150 years, and if the trees are taken care of properly, they can be harvested most of their lifespan. Cork oak forests are concentrated in Portugal, Spain, Italy, and France. These places make 67% of cork products. Around 33% is produced in North Africa. There are approximately 5.4 million acres containing the cork oak trees. The cork industry employs more than 15,000 workers in factories and 10,000 seasonal workers to harvest the cork. If it is done correctly, harvesting cork does not harm the tree and the bark grows back. Cork is harvested during its active growth stage of the tree, which is from the middle of May to the end of August. Harvesting cork bark is done in six stages. First is opening the bark with an axe. Second is separating the bark from the tree trunk. Third is dividing the planks from what will remain on the tree with horizontal cuts. Fourth is extracting the planks carefully so it doesn't split. The fifth stage is to remove any little pieces of bark to remove any parasites from the tree. The last stage is to mark the tree with the last number of the year was harvested. Once the cork is harvested, the planks are stored on concrete slabs rather than on the ground so it doesn't get contaminated by fungus. The planks are left outside for no less than six months so it can stabilize. The first stage of cork production is boiling the cork. This is done to soften and clean it. It also makes it flatter and easier to work with. Next, they are cut into usable pieces. Then they decide what products are going to be made by the cork. 60% of cork production is used as bottle stoppers for wine and champagne. Wine is known to taste better as it ages, so cork is perfect for preserving the wine's characteristics because it does not allow gas to escape. There are synthetic stoppers made with plastic, however they are not airtight which can taint the wine's taste. They are also harder to remove from bottles and cannot be used to recork the bottle of wine. Lastly, the plastic corks are not biodegradable. Other characteristics of cork include the absence of odors, tastes, and it does not change under different temperatures. Other uses for cork are the handles of fishing rods because it floats. Subarin is present in the cell walls of cork which gives it an impermeable waxy finish which makes it waterproof. Other uses includes buoys in the ocean, bulletin boards, dartboards, flooring, wall tiles, and linings in baseballs, golf balls, cricket balls, and hockey pucks. Many people also use cork in their homes because it's not slippery, it's resistant to humidity, it's warm and quiet, and works as sound insulation. Plus, it needs minimal maintenance. People have been using cork for thousands of years. The ancient Egyptians used cork stoppers for bath oils, spice tubes, liquor bottles, and test tubes.